Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Yep. All right. From heaven, heaven above, above with wisdom, yeah. power, and might. His wisdom. Our God is an awesome, an awesome God. God. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, guys, welcome to episode 178 <laughs> of the Super Mega Podcast. Today, we're joined by two very, 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 very special guests. Probably the most special guests we've ever had. No disrespect to other guests, but yes, probably one of the most requested guests, if not the most requested guest on our podcast. Yeah. It's uh, it's the boys. It's the boys. Freaking boys. Should I introduce you, or should you guys? I don't do. That's any an of awkward my own thing work. to ask. Like, we, should, you no, guys want to? We throw it on everybody every time for our podcast too, because okay. I don't like doing that. Do okay, so that's. Um, you guys. Can, hi uh, guys, I'm Eddie Burback. I'm 23 years young. Ooh. Um, I make commentary videos on YouTube, and I have a podcast. Go ahead, Gus. It's my turn. Gus, uh, think of a an adjective that starts with a G, and then say that you're that Gus. I'm grumpy little Gus. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. And uh, well, now I'm, I'll remember your name, yeah. Gus. <laughs> I'm Game Grump Gus. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I run a comedy channel on YouTube. I do sketches and stuff, and I and I have a podcast with Eddie. It's the Gus and Eddie podcast, and these boys will be on it very shortly. Mm -hmm. You guys are actually our most requested guests. Yeah, Absolutely. honestly, for like <laughs> doing a little trade off. Look yeah. at that. Oh, now, well, now I feel bad. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to steal it first before we came on yours. That's fair. Yeah, you got to us first. We're slacking. That's okay. We're slacking too. We slack. <laughs> Every day of the week, pretty much. Yeah. I don't know, no, no, dude. Except you... when we're working on our Patreon, we yes. don't slack. When we don't we're slack working. on that. Nope. Gus, you also do uh, you do stuff with Comedy Central, right? Yeah, I do some stuff with Comedy Central. They're really cool. They've afforded me so many uh, opportunities to just kind of like take my G dang time with shit. Uh, but I've been sending in some digital sketches for them to intermittently post and stuff. And oh, that's sick. I've gone to a couple like live events. I went to like South by and like Comic Con and stuff like that. And Whoa! Did like some man on the street stuff with them. So that's sick. They've been really cool. And I, dude, I love what they're doing right now because they're bringing in creators on YouTube and just doing like an SNL week with them. Like they did like me, Caleb City. Brandon Rogers, Anthony Padilla, and then they're gonna do, I think, Churdley's and Trevor Wallace. I'm not sure. That's unconfirmed, but I like that. <laughs> and then the boys from Superman. And, uh, Eddie, you do sketches for Breitbart too, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're about I've seen those. those about are great. forty minute sketches you every time, audio only. You started off on Louder with Crowder. <laughs> <laughs> I was like one of the neon signs in the back. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's great to have you guys on. We've been won this for for. Ever, I, I think like we brought since oh, before we knew you almost a year ago. Before Ooh. before we even met you, we were like we should get them on the podcast. I'm like well, we don't know them though, but we want to get them on. And so Thanks finally for here, us. the boys came to the super yeah. megaplex. We uh, drank some sparkling waters in the kitchen. We hung out. It was a fantastic time. One of the best days of my year so far. I agree. It's not even half over yet. <laughs> 11. <laughs> Getting me excited now. The day we were at Universal is actually one of my favorite days of like the last That was such year a fucking then, fun day. That was my favorite day of the year. It. Yeah. Of the decade. There you Damn. go. Yeah. Damn, man. I'm going to keep busting that out for the next five years. It's <laughs> like, oh, this is the best thing of the decade. Because <laughs> it, it only makes sense in this tiny window now. And then for the rest of the time, people are like, why the fuck does he keep saying that? It's so stupid. Like, wow, he must have been having a shitty decade if that was his best day of the decade. But yeah, dude, that was my best day of the decade. The Universal trip. Right yes, Universal. That's yes. where we had the the fucking video that I have no <laughs> idea what, what happened with that. That fucking blew up, It dude. was so weird. I don't... For people that don't know, it was just this dumb video Jakey shot of Matt drinking a, a fake beer off an app and me saying, whoa, and then Hideo Kojima fucking retweeted it, which didn't make any sense. Yeah. We're on the Universal, uh, like, studio tour ride, yeah. and we're just dicking around, and all of us are in the video. It just yeah. pans by... And then just goes over to Eddie and he's like, whoa. <laughs> and I've never seen anything like that just take off. And it has like 500 something thousand <laughs> likes. I was watching the meme playlist yesterday and it came up in the middle. I was like, oh shit. A <laughs> meme page I followed posted it recently and I was like, okay, it's still getting posted. We're going to see that in like 10 years from now. Just going to go back and watch some like meme video. It's like, oh, there's that, that day at Universal. Gus has a couple of those from his early YouTube stuff that are like the shittier phone recording things mm -hmm. that'll pop up in meme playlists all the time. Sometimes I forget that I shot it where I'll, I'll see it come up in a playlist and I'll be like, oh, I've seen this one fucking 10 times. Oh, yeah, I made that. Because <laughs> it's just on my cell phone. Because when I was doing YouTube Haiku stuff uh, like years ago, I was almost exclusively making things for the subreddit YouTube Haiku, you mm -hmm. know, like 30 second or less comedy stuff. And I was so afraid that people were going to get burned out on seeing me all the time that I'd switch up like the cameras. 
I'd be like, one's on a DSLR, one's on an old shitty Sony cam, one's on a cell phone, and then I'd be in some of them. So I just wanted to make give that extra layer of maybe not everyone will realize I made the video. So there's a lot of earlier stuff where I'm not even in it. You want to deceive people. I wanted to trick and fool everybody. You're a liar. I, yeah, hey, you're a liar. First of all. Guys, come on, no. <laughs> Dirty lie. That's one of the seven deadly sins, I'm pretty sure. It I is. mean, it's one of uh, the ten, ten Commandments, actually. Shit, dude. Don't lie. Yeah. Is that one of them? No. Don't lie? <laughs> no. It's said like that. It's don't, don't lie. lie. Come on. <laughs> come on, don't lie. Yeah. So I guess God doesn't care if you lie, then. It's what? not one of the ten commandments. But What's... because he wants uh, maybe f- fame from deceiving people, don't covet what, maybe don't covet. You could work something in there. That's, that's a commandment. Don't covet? You just don't harder. covet, dude. Mm-hmm. Just don't right. covet that th- thy neighbor's wife. Bro, if I had a nickel for every time I've just gone around town coveting. <laughs> dude, rich man. We just might have to covet tonight, boys. <laughs> I, might, I might have coveted thy neighbor's wife at some point. <laughs> That's how I tell you I've slept with like your significant others. Like, well, covet covet's a few steps back from actually going through with the ordeal. What, wait, what is, is there th- something you'd like to say? Adultery. Okay. There's nothing I'd like to say. Okay. I've never... <laughs> and I wouldn't tell you on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk after this. I, you guys can't see, but everyone's getting really sweaty in the room right now. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, we turned I'm the dripping. heat up. Yeah, oh, that's nuts, dude. Seems like marital issue sweat, though. Not not temperature wise. Just a lot of stuff to figure out at, just after the fact. Don't but, worry about it. But we were talking about. Uh, <laughs> uh, Let's keep it. Wait, light. what does co- wait, what, is, what does coveting mean? Does covet mean to have want? Sex? It's like craving. It's, it's like craving. you want it. You, you're you're jealous of. Oh, it, it just means you're, want. Yeah, it's wait, not, the, not even the act of it. So they didn't say technically. What if you don't want your neighbor's wife, but you have sex with her anyway? Like a passion. Oh, well, that's, that's well, you're still doing sex. adultery, but you're yeah, only that, doing one of the two. What if I secretly get married to her? And then, but he can't have more than one wife. I but secretly they, they divorce them. You could, right? No, no, no. You have one wife, and she has one husband, and they f- have sex, and that's it. Does the Bible state that monogamy is the only way to go, though? Like in the commandments? I guess dudes could have more than one wife, but the wives couldn't have more than one dude. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. God was very strict on that. He was strict on that. Because it's like, if it's not a commandment, what's the point of fo- like following the rule? I thought that was like the... Those are the rules. And if don't lie is in there, then Gus didn't do anything wrong. Well, first exactly. thing, Moses came down and just came down with these plates and said they were from God. With so plates. at the same time... Fine China. Like, yeah. Fine China <laughs> like, plates. In fine China plates. <laughs> it's right, a bunch of the, like, bless this house signs. <laughs> 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 He's throwing them out like, oh, no. Oh, here's a rule. <laughs> He came down with the slabs. I still love one of my favorite dumb little psych eggs ever. It's from, uh, oh, I'm absolutely drawing a, bl- a blank right now. I don't know if it's like Life of Brian or it was an old Mel Brooks kind of thing. So it wasn't Monty Python, but it's it's Mel Brooks as Moses. And he's coming down with like the Ten Commandments. And But the thing is, he has three tablets. So he's coming down and he goes, all right, God said, whoosh, and one of them falls and breaks. He's like, because he goes, 15 <laughs> commandments. Whoosh. Ten commandments. <laughs> there's like five more that we needed to know. There's like a other. Aren't there like hypothetically other books of the Bible that like were never found or lost? The well, there's ones yeah. that were discarded. Clifford there's ones the big that, red dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, the illustrations are. Well, like they actually chose what books to keep. Like there's a shit ton of books written out there, but uh, who chose? Just. Some the guy, people just who them. put together the, the Bible. Those I, don't, guys, I don't know their names, unfortunately. The boys. Yeah, the, boy, the, <laughs> the Bible boys. The boys were like, let's not put this one in. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> no, that's true. Like, a number of them were discarded, and it's like, uh, none of the books written by women, even women that allegedly knew Christ, were included in the Bible and stuff. Yep. I was just talking about this with Eddie last week. Like, I went, when I was a kid, I went and I saw the Dead Sea Scrolls at the Minneapolis, like, uh, Science Museum. And uh, it's like the oldest physical transcripts, like, written on papyrus or whatever the hell of... The Bible. Like you said the they were the touring it, right? It doesn't just sit at the Minneapolis. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> Wait, why is it in Minneapolis? Oh, how <laughs> holy Minneapolis! <laughs> That's sister city to Bethlehem. <laughs> they are making a national. They are making a national treasure three. So maybe what, that dude? Happened. I yeah. knew about this. Has been stalled forever. I'm so pissed. It's it, he's getting too old. Well, I mean, did, did you see uh, what was it? What was it? It starts with an M. Magic Mike. No. Yeah, he was in that. He was not Mike. in Magic Mike. He was the stand. He, he, oh, it's that, I know what you're talking it's about. That, is like, it Mandy? Mandy. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't see seen it. that yet. Yeah. That was super fun. 
That was a fun movie. He was yelling a bunch. He still has a lot of energy in him. He's good. It just works all the time. Does he have some kind of like, it doesn't, it's sort of like Johnny Depp. Doesn't, isn't Johnny Depp like addicted to buying houses and that's why he has to keep appearing in movies? Well, yeah, Nick Cage is in debt because he bought like a fucking dinosaur skull and a bunch of other shit. <laughs> yeah. Didn't he Dude. buy it from Leo? Yeah. 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 Who so like these? he's he's into debt, just buying all these goofy things and a bunch of houses, and now he had to sell a bunch of them. I can't believe these celebrities who it's like they could be set for life and just relax, and then they just keep buying shit, and they're like, well, I gotta keep embarrassing myself all over town. Well, the thing that's funny is that Nick Cage is legitimately like an accomplished actor. Yeah, he's in a lot of shit, but he's also in a lot of well remembered and good shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But on the t I, on every Hollywood tour you go to, if they ever mention Nick Cage, they're only gonna mention how he's now in debt. Yeah, it's like, so, fuck you, dude. The guy's on his grind out there. I, I, know. I, had to, I had to whip up my phone quick to look up the National Treasure 3 thing, because I do regularly check in on it. <laughs> There's new news. Like, there? you'll just search yeah. up on Google, like, I've five never years ago, this. National Treasure 3 news. Yeah, dude. Well, because there's, like, look how long the history is. There's, like, Jesus paragraphs, Christ. and it starts in, like, 2007, where it's like, okay, we're going to do it this time, this time, this time. And the latest was in 2013 that John Turtletob said, who I guess is, like, the producer, is like, oh, yeah, it's close. Like, the script is almost done, but Disney needs to greenlight it but now the latest thing is in January 2020 it was announced that Chris Bremner the writer of Bad Boys for Life would write a new script for it <laughs> okay. so we're back at the freaking drawing board but hey, it's happening but, but it's, it's Bad still, Boys for Life writer I can still trust climbing that. up there we're, we're still gonna eventually treasures. see it I think it's going to be the Sea Scrolls okay what is gonna be the treasure oh the national that a, that's trip. not a national. Well, that's going to be the document treasure. that they use to somehow find it. I think it's going to be like the Magna Carta or the Rosetta Stone or something, but I, not like the actual Rosetta Stone, like a like a 2007 Windows XP version. Of <laughs> <Rosetta> <laughs> I like, for like I Portuguese, like, yeah. it's like we we had the Constitution, but what about the thing that led to the Constitution, <laughs> the Magna Carta? I think it'll be the Monica Lewinsky dress. <laughs> <laughs> they have to scrape out the. Cum it wasn't thing. his cum. <laughs> you know what they do at, at the back of the Constitution, like the lemon juice. Yeah. And the black yeah. light, they do that. I just want to see a ninety-year-old John Voight with a hair dryer <laughs> over the. There's cum a map on it, like with Bill Clinton's fucking. You know how that you find that out guy. it's Hillary's cum. <laughs> Whoa! There's that, there's that guy that uh, says he's Bill Clinton's son, and he's like on a huge crusade to get Bill Clinton to acknowledge it. So the movie is the trying half to help black him. dude. Yeah, yeah. So they're trying to help him out. So they're going to get the cum off of the dress to do a DNA test because Bill Clinton won't do one. So they're going to do a DNA test with the, what was left on the dress to prove once and for all that he is Bill Clinton's illegitimate son. Somehow you know. Epstein's going to be thrown in there for extra dramatic effect. Mm -hmm. and, it's it's, ghost. and it's timely. So people are going to be like, I heard of this Epstein guy. I need to see more about him. What's mm -hmm. going on? Who is it? I don't know why Jerry Seinfeld is like, <laughs> who's, who's Epstein? What's with this Epstein guy? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen this? Have you heard about this? I might have been on the plane. <laughs> did, did he ever fly on the plane? <laughs> Didn't Epstein own did, the did plane? He? Wasn't that like his whole? No, no, no. Jerry. I mean, did Jerry Seinfeld ever oh, fly on the? the I Lido bet. Explorer? Didn't Jerry start dating a seventeen-year-old yep. when yes. he was in his thirties? We had a we had He'd a be on the plane. We, we had a classic bit about that. You pick her up from high school and go to In and Out and have classic, you know, those classic high school dates. <laughs> <laughs> some, some guy did a stand up. There was this place. I might have told you guys about this, but there was this place uh, that did like a stand up night where you had to impersonate another comedian and this guy goes up uh, as Jerry Seinfeld and he's like, what's the deal with girlfriends always talking about math homework? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, saw that. I think so you retweeted it or something. So I, I saw it on Twitter. It's fucking <laughs> it's like, hilarious. What's the deal with your girlfriend's parents being your age? <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest stand-up bit. Dude, that's crazy that post Seinfeld Jerry like dated a teenager. That's like he had the Brought her to art. red carpet events and shit. I know he brought her to the red carpet. <laughs> Did they get married? 17? Dude. Yeah. Whoa! Like the he's just like on that. this is her. That's even the <laughs> pre-Hulu paycheck. Like he's loaded, but not like stupid Dumbo loaded yet. Honestly. Is he? Is he at a hundred billion dollars yet? I don't I know. I think he's poor. He he has like a. Is he? Is he I the think, richest entertainer? Uh, I think well, Dre's musicians got him beat. are yeah different, but comedians. I, him and Larry David, I think, <laughs> are the are the richest because like yeah they. They have a fuck ton of money. Yeah, dude. That's what I love about Larry David is he, he still would never guess over like a bill in his show, but he's worth like four hundred million dollars or something like that. Also, you would never guess Larry David's rich when you look at him. Mm. He just looks like any average like older Jewish dude. That's that the con. I love that. See, like he, I, I'm still a huge fan of Larry David. I love Larry David. Mm -hmm. Eddie love and I have, have talked about Seinfeld extensively, and I even like I've got all the whole Seinfeld outfit and stuff. Like I've been trying to do a sketch about it, like Seinfeld these days, and it's just he, Jerry's gotten so much more out of touch as the years have gone on, and he's so elitist with how he approaches like other people's comedy styles and stuff. It's mm -hmm. so disappointing. 
Makes me so he's such an elitist about stand up where he do, he won't even call anyone a comedian who doesn't do stand up comedy. Mm-hmm. So it's like Will Ferrell to him is not a comedian because he doesn't do stand up. And it's like he's just I don't know he's a huge fucking elitist. He's, he's also it. one of those comedians that's like. It seems like his whole shtick nowadays just being bitter about PC culture. Yeah. And that's like all he focuses on. He has a residency it's, in Vegas. Uh oh. These stories. Yeah. He doesn't need to do that. I know, but he does because at Caesar's I don't Palace, know if it's a residency. I, it might just be a show. That's true. But they had a big so on outside of Caesar's Palace in Vegas, they had this massive portrait of him, like up on a wall. But it's a picture where it just looks like a like a dictator's picture. Yeah, and it's on the side of this massive like. <laughs> concrete building so it, it, it looked like some alternate universe where like he's the leader of North Korea and they have his portrait up <laughs> outside this building Imagine Jerry he's the Seinfeld leader of Las Vegas, Vegas. <laughs> he, he claims it as his own territory he can buy Las Vegas <laughs> these stories of, of Jerry Seinfeld like it, it makes me scared like he's an elitist he's you know dating these 17 year olds like what if he is like white people's Bill Cosby Ooh. Ooh. we can't lose Jerry <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna end up in jail he blind. helped raise me and my kids. I like the through line, though, that he is actually the leader of North Korea. Like, he is that dictator. <laughs> yeah. That's where all his money came from. Seinfeld didn't make that much money. Yeah. No, was, the U.S. is like, dude. It was a flop. They're like, Jerry, you got to shut down your nuclear program. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> what's the deal with these nuclear deals? Right? <laughs> uh, this Iran deal. <laughs> That's I think with with him and Larry that I, I know they're still friends and everything, but you see them it's like oh Larry was kind of the genius behind all this. Yeah, shit. Larry's still yeah. having like fun and like I feel and like his Curb stuff is, is so still good, like still. a lot like I feel it when I watch is like lighthearted like mm-hmm. still all the time I'll get recommended like a bunch of uh, oh what's Curb Your Enthusiasm clips like yeah. they're they're just always like popular they're doing well he he's continuing to do the show it's con- it's like still funny it's a hilarious show yeah Larry's got like the sweetest gig in, in Hollywood because he can do it whenever he wants and he doesn't write a full script and he gets to fuck around with his it's friends like and then everybody yeah. loves it and so it's just like he's got the best gig I think because it's like around his neighborhood too so he just gets to fucking it's the hang Palisades out. right I think. I don't We're know. Shot. Well, actually, George George Costanza is based on Larry David. Yeah. Like, yeah, that whole character, like, is Larry David. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. It was, it was Seinfeld. <laughs> Jerry Seinfeld's based on Larry David. That is, again, uh, you can't give award shows a, a ton of credibility, but that is a big, like, misstep is that uh, Jason Alexander never won an Emmy for playing George Costanza. Crazy. Stupid as shit. He was so good, too. He but he, good. We were talking about this on a recent podcast. He just kind of, like... He didn't really do much after Seinfeld. He was in yeah. Shallow Hal, dude. <laughs> he was and Malcolm Hal. in the Middle. I forgot about that. <laughs> it's true. He was in like two episodes of Malcolm, one episode of Malcolm in the Middle. What Wait. episode is he in Malcolm in the Middle? He, is he the shitty teacher? Is that what I'm No, about? he's this guy that plays chess at the park. And oh, yeah. he like hates life and Malcolm tries to help him get a job at the grocery store. I love that fucking And that's, show. that's, it's a good episode. It's on Hulu. Wait, the, he's got a shitty life? Yeah. Oh, okay. I I never watched Malcolm in the Middle, but I watched like three episodes and I saw one that he's it, on dude. where it's like where they were on the phone with him and he was just like, I'm going to kill myself today. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. Remember, I saw yeah. that one. Yeah. The yeah. show's really good. You've never seen Ma- you never watched Malcolm in the Middle? I mean, I, if anything, I've caught episodes here and there. I never watched a bulk so of it. Good. It's so fucking good. It's it's just like the way it's written. It's just some of the funniest. Like, and, the, and the child actors are legitimately good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's the perfect kind of nostalgia thing because it's right when we were actually kids. Yeah, yeah. It started in 2000 and 2007. So it like encapsulates that era like when we were very, you know, growing up around the same time. Yeah. So fucking it's weird though. Like when those shows happen, like Seinfeld, Malcolm the Middle, Th- those actors during the shows are, are so known even to this day like think about Dewey everyone knows who that is but like they never go on and do other roles and if they do it's usually just like a really small indie film or a small cameo role I wonder what it is about like certain actors careers that just stop wasn't, wasn't RJ Mitty in a film with uh who did who did the old clip Ray William Ray Johnson Ray William Johnson wasn't yes. he in a movie with RJ Mitty <laughs> yeah. who plays Walter Jr. on Breaking Bad was in a movie with Ray William Johnson it's the two main characters really yeah I, I don't it's called know. What's Driving Doug, where RJ <laughs> Mitty uh, plays a uh, man with cerebral palsy, but a much more severe case than what he has in real life. And then Ray William Johnson is going to Vegas and he brings him along with him or something. It's like one of those that. like, I'm going to show you what life is all about because you can't because you can't walk and that's the moral dude if Ray William Johnson said he was going to show me what life is about I'd be like no thanks <laughs> really? I would be like Ray 
I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> dude, he's going to take me to a room just filled with bricks of cocaine. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Dude, he's doing inspirational videos now. He has a he has a Hulu series. I feel like he's just been working in the shadows like all this time. Dude, like he was super out there and all of a sudden it's just like scheming in the shadows and releasing yeah, shit. He's back. He, I, I, was, I was going through Hulu last night he, and I was going through the documentary section and he has a movie called Who Effed Up the Internet. It's like F star 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 ED. And the, the picture was just Ray William Johnson just like, and I was like, when did he get a movie? And he's doing inspirational videos? Like yeah, legit? Dude. The thing is, though, he never fully went away because he stopped doing equals the three. Facebook videos. The Facebook, he's been murdering on Facebook. Mm. And I've, I've heard from a ton of people that, like, your CPMs on Facebook can be way better than YouTube stuff. So, I have like, a friend that does that. Oh, it's nuts. So, so he's, like, Spanish-speaking Facebook. I have a friend named Ricky from Mexico, and he'll make, like, meme videos. Uh, kind of similar to, like, what you do, but he just does them in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And then they just blow up. Damn, yeah, dude, like, Ray's been doing, like, Instagram comedy stuff, you know, where it's just these, ooh, hot girl, sexy, weird money yep. sketch, things yep. like that, and he's apparently been making a lot of money, and he's been touring a lot for, like, stand-up. Like, when I was going on the road, it was always the, like, oh, Ray was here two months ago. I, have to say, I didn't know he does stand-up. Yeah, stand okay, either. so Jerry Seinfeld would call Ray William Johnson a comedian, just to yeah, clarify. Yeah, but it would <laughs> kill him to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see Ray William Johnson stand-up. Honestly, I gotta say, I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked if it wasn't bad. Yeah, as in the way, like, like I, I could see myself being like going out and be like, okay, that was not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Like, he's was, had like ten years, yeah, to work on it. So I feel like it would have to be like because I bit think doing stand up comedy is so different also from doing Facebook videos. So mm. the humor you see in those Facebook videos is not gonna be probably the same thing you see on stage. He like, just, he just for me would come off as like a. Like a creep, like a eat, like just a creepy Aziz and sorry, like, like he can be the loud person. Blind. I'm trying to like think of like what his stage persona is. Is it not going to be the same like loud, brash thing that it is on Facebook, well, or is he going to be like, I'm actually like really depressed and I'm going to say fucked up shit, uh, and I make Facebook. Is he going to be self aware of the stuff that he does? Like I, what? I bet he's like one of those insurgent bros where he'll make fun of bro culture, even though he kind of is. Mm. But he's like, OK, but I went into the depths of hell for you to make fun <laughs> of these guys, even though I kind of am this guy a little bit, you know, yeah. like that. And then at the end of the set, as a treat, he'll sit down on a stool with an acoustic guitar and do some uh, acoustic uh, versions of your favorite Martian tracks. Is that, <laughs> is that a dig on Adam Sandler? No, it's a dig on Ray William Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I miss your favorite Martian, man. That was it was my favorite Martian. Dude, it was our yeah. favorite Martian. The zombie song, love song. What was the, 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 the doing your mom? Was that the yeah? Name? That was doing, doing your was mom. Martian. Stalking your mom too. That was that was Fatty Spins. That was his other musical project. Oh, I'm so oh. sorry. <laughs> my favorite thing is if you go to your favorite Martian, he changed the name of the channel just so all caps. It's this project is retired. That's he wants really. To, he, he's really trying to separate. <laughs> we named our Twitter that for a while. Did we? <laughs> yeah, it, it was like this project retired for like a month. It confused a lot of people. They're like, "You guys quitting?" It's like, "No, it's a Ray William Johnson." Re Never mind. <laughs> Who's so, like a, a comedian or somebody that you that like historically gets a lot of shit that maybe you saw and you're like, "Oh, dude, I this was actually really good." Can you think of any examples? Yes, Jeff Dunham. Really? Uh, okay. Let, let, well, what I was stand okay, of comedians here's, have you Here's seen? the thing, though. I was young, so I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. But like looking back at it now, I'm like, would like. Would I enjoy it as much because he does a lot of bits that are poking fun at a, I don't know, like his one Arab character is like this dead terrorist dude. His one black character, which he voices, is like a pimp. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, okay, I like don't the know. The Mexican character is a jalapeno. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on. Um, no, I meant for like the positive though, where even recently, uh, I, I just haven't watched a ton of David Spade stuff, but yeah, I'd see him in like kind of these B movies sometimes and stuff. He's a talk show, right? Yeah. And, and I've, I've caught clips of the talk show on Comedy Central. <laughs> it sounds like I'm <laughs> it's been really good. And I've liked the guests that he's had on too. But like, I've always just sort of seen him and just been like, yeah, okay, Spade or whatever. But I saw him do like a 15 minute set at the Largo and it was so goddamn funny. And now I want to watch more of his stand up and stuff. Like he was just killing it on stage. I'm trying to think if, if there's any comedians I've seen that because unfortunately the comedians I have gone to see that I didn't like beforehand uh, I ended up really not liking afterwards Tim Allen Tim Allen was a great example oh, of that no. we saw Tim Allen at the laugh fact <laughs> yes he did say the n-word and that's not a joke <laughs> Actually, that's, that's not a that's wait, not a Kramer joke what? he really did he yeah. said he, it in the he, Kramer he, spot he, he yes said, he said a version of it he said an altered version of it that 
that implied that it was feminine. Feminine. So basically, he tried to take the word and make it a like French or something. Like think of Tigris, like the oh, river. Oh, oh, I get you. And he That's said the- that on stage because before we go, you know, it's the Laugh Factory where, where Kramer did his little oopsie, and we were like joking, like, oh, what if Tim Allen? Who? And when he did it, we all looked at each other and we were like. What the hell? He was hammered too. He he got on stage. His whole stand-up thing. It's the same stuff he's been doing on late night shows. I was going back and watching like late night shows with interviews on him. He's doing the same fucking jokes up there on that stage. The whole like, oh, I was Santa Claus and I smoked cigarettes and I hated kids. Uh, People's like, Republic of California. <laughs> <laughs> That's like his whole stand-up set. And he was just, I I. It was interesting being like 15 feet from a hammered Tim Allen just rant about modern politics. I was like. Huh. That's funny. You know Disney Pixar is just like well, <laughs> kind of if, if you saw Toy, Toy Story, Story Four, stop selling tickets a little bit. <laughs> Did you see Toy Story Four? I haven't seen it yet. They I cut know. him almost fully out of the movie. What? He's, he's barely in. He's it. barely yeah. in. Like he's... Buzz is barely in Toy Story Four. Yeah. And you know it's because of like the shit he does now. Have you seen Last Man Standing? I've no, I've, I've just oh, seen my, it. You're lost. Episodes. You're lost. <laughs> it's good. He, hey, he works in is it a hunting shop or is it just a sports it's shop? It's like a Bass Pro shop type of thing. Yeah. Um and he does he does online like inspirational vlogs. He has a bunch of uh doesn't he have like Obama and Hillary jokes in the show? Yeah, he does. He does. It's a great show. I ironically <laughs> watched a season of it. Which yeah. I really got myself there. <laughs> I went on a fa- first date with a girl and uh, she said, I said, what's your favorite show? And she said, Last Man Standing. <laughs> Not as a joke. So then it turned into also the last date with that girl. <laughs> <laughs> she was seeing if you would be the last man standing. Ooh, See? yeah. With she didn't even like the show. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I think you told me a story. Didn't you guys end up watching an episode? We watched a couple of them. That's okay. the same one. <laughs> where... Wait, so was it on that date? Or was it was it? on that day. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she, she said, that sounds like a perfect My favorite show is Last Man Standing. Can we stop what we're doing and watch a few episodes? That was after the one where I went and saw The Revenant and she tried to leave and then came back in because I didn't leave with her because it was too violent. <laughs> I, you told me that story. That That's one of my... F- can we talk about that story? Yeah, that's fine. It's both the same date too, by the way. Like, <laughs> this so, sounds like the worst date. So the date history. starts it's at terrible. the movie theater. You're it's, gonna go see the Revenant. <laughs> it's uh, it was a girl in one of my college classes, and uh, I had heard from a mutual friend that she kind of liked me, so I asked her out to go see a movie. And stupidly, I had just seen the Revenant, and I was so stoked on it. I was like, dude. Oh you want to go see The Revenant? <laughs> so it was a movie I'd already seen, and it's one of the most violent movies ever. It's a horrible first date movie. So we went in there, and right away in the beginning of the film, the bear attack happens, and Leo's just getting absolutely destroyed, and she seemed, like, really uncomfortable, you know, and just was obviously making those kind of body language things of, like, I don't really want to be here right now. Uh, so then she finally, like, she, she makes a show of, like, picking up her jacket and her purse, and she, like, stands up and starts to leave, and I'm still, like, sitting there, and I'm watching The Revenant, and I'm watching The Revenant, and she just leaves, and I just was like, all right, maybe she just needs to step out for a minute, and I forgot that she left, <laughs> and so much time went by. <laughs> so much time. It was, like, way later in the movie. You, you're enjoying the, You're legitimately and having a fucking I, blast I, watching I, the movie. I'd He's enjoying forgotten. cinema. Yeah, I was like, I had forgotten I was on a date, and I was just hard into the revenant and then she comes back in like way later in the movie like and and she just sits down and was like kind of quiet and just sitting there with her arms crossed and Do you stuff think she like if you looked at her she would have been like like had her arms out like she would have given you the motion like hey you were supposed to come out i was afraid that if i, <laughs> if I looked at her i would have to pay the toll for <laughs> so so yeah like we i i like i said we went outside and like to the car and i was just like oh, i need in wait like did you that. finish the movie yeah like well, I okay sat so, the rest so of the like 90 percent of the movie she just stood outside yeah so it was just or like she, she could have had to take a shit dude she could have honestly you know. and maybe the jacket and purse was a ploy maybe she threw her <laughs> me under the bus Pretending to be like me, the asshole staying, and she just had to take a long Because she's in, on a first date. It's very embarrassing if you have to take a shit. So she's like, I'm yeah. out of here because I don't like this movie. But she's like, oh, thank God. Absolutely. Yeah. And she uses like an extra half hour to air out in the winter cold just to be safe. But <laughs> but no, like we went out there and she was like kind of upset. I'm like, yeah, you know, in the car. And we went back to my dorm room and uh, I was just like, hey, just, I don't know. Do you want to throw something on the TV? And, she, and she's like, sure. And I was like, what's your favorite show? Last Man Standing. And we watched like three episodes. Didn't <laughs> three even t- episodes. Didn't touch yeah. each other. And she left and I never, uh, we didn't go on any other dates again. <laughs> I love that. It's like the end of a book. We turned on the, a few episodes of Last Man Standing. We didn't touch each other and we went to bed. <laughs> Do you think <laughs> any, good anyone's ever book. touched anybody while watching Last Man Standing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Well, do you think like 
Last Man Standing has been the precursor to people touching. Absolutely. People Nothing have lost their virginity while watching that show. <laughs> yeah. Than Tim Allen working a Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> Honestly, like, I wouldn't be surprised, just statistically speaking, if today, as of recording this, somebody uh, loses their virginity while watching Last Man Standing. There has to be a video on, like, Pornhub where it's like, <laughs> I... I bang my hot girlfriend while watching Last Man Standing. <laughs> just like in the background. Like, yeah. Like a POV video. Alan like ranting about Alan. guns in the background. <laughs> Take that swig. How was it? My favorite thing about podcasting is like when a conversation ends and then it's just instantly just... <laughs> yeah. And just that, that wait until like, anyone else have a conversation? <laughs> I, you know what I'm gonna do when I edit this? I'm gonna make those three times longer. <laughs> so like, no, you should just put it in the middle of a conversation. It just feels like really awkward. Like Thirty seconds before one of us has an idea to even like connect to that. Like someone's leading up to something. Like, oh, dude, that totally reminds me when I was a kid. Like that's how you should edit it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make that one like three times. <laughs> no, I'm gonna take the silence out just so it, it sounds like us a joke. Didn't even exist. Just add it in like, like, <sighs> <sighs> I want to talk about a, a death that happened recently that's been on my mind. <laughs> okay, why? <laughs> Little someone named Mr. Peanut. Yes. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Brand Twitter will never be the same. Why, why did they, I don't want to, okay, I don't want to feed into this whole like. No, starting the conversation, you can't, you, you can't, you're already in it. Fuck it. Why'd they kill Mr. Peanut? I like this one. Because we're do. talking about it. It's Yeah, it's now so, we're talking about planters peanuts when we, we, we wouldn't be it's before. It's so stupid, and that's why I like this one. I love one. how everyone comes in. Yeah, this one was it, clearly like, we want people to talk about something so dumb. They threw him off a cliff and blew him up. That's <laughs> Did you see the video? Hilarious. Yeah. He fucking falls off a cliff to his death. Yeah. And you know when he hits the ground, his shell cracks, dude. Like, mm -hmm. his, his nuts are spilling out from the inside. <laughs> That's not like a balls joke. That's just, like, he's filled with nuts. And then the fucking with the he hits a bus and it explodes. Quick death, it. at least, right? Yeah. I like that. It's it's ballsy to it's it's nutty to choose to. Uh, <laughs> I hate how you, much you, you enjoyed that. Uh, it's it's it it's bold to do something as brash as kill off Mister Peanut, and it's another thing to do it in a way where his last moments of life are filled with the absolute terror <laughs> and he was smiling while he was falling he was happy to give his life for i think his he friends. was in shock probably because <laughs> you know they could have just done something like he's going off to college or something like that like, <laughs> let's just brutally murder him it's like oh he went to live on the peanut farm yeah. on on uh on jimmy uh jimmy carter jimmy carter's peanut farm. Yeah. it would have been different if they had a video of him like being cracked open like mercilessly <laughs> as he's screaming just yeah. like grabbing onto the door frame just taken hostage by isis <laughs> they released like a legit isis video it's an kid. isis this video of Mr. Peanut, just cracking them open. It's a fucking cartel machete video of Mr. Peanut. <laughs> so if wait, if they if they behead Mr. Peanut, do they cut him where his actual head ends, or do they cut him in the middle where you can cleanly separate the two peanuts in the show? It's got to be clean through the through the two nuts. Through the two nuts? Yeah. Right, well, in between the two. Yeah, nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not the, through the two nuts. That's the most respectful way to do it. But it is ISIS we're talking about. So oh. they'd probably well, they probably cartel go with through. a chainsaw and they just. I mean, I mean, like, imagine if Planners Peanut just uploaded this like grainy cell phone video like <laughs> in the desert like like at night and it's just like Mr. Peanut being brutally executed. They're like, they're, like holding up like, like they the, pull the nuts out and they're like holding them up. <laughs> <laughs> they put Mr. Peanut in a cage and set it on fire. That would be that would peanuts roasting on an open fire. <laughs> they should have done it around Christmas time. That, that, that would have been like See if they wanted to really get people talking. If it was like realistically shot, like it was on a video camera, and like they they just brutally execute him. Why aren't we behind the marketing of Mr. See, Peanut? that's why they need to hire people like us. You know, <laughs> they, they're gonna go and get celebrities and do this whole epic, like, oh, I'm risk, I'm giving my life for you guys. Like, no, if they want people to talk about Mr. Peanut, because here's the thing, and we bring in politics. You got to remember, yeah, that. Mm -hmm. yeah, twenty years from now, well, what's hot right now? Politics. Hey, so politics. You got to talk big. about him. We'll get Tim Allen in it too. Yeah. Tim Allen will play one of the terrorists, and we, we basically go. <laughs> he, he's Tim the Toolman Taylor in it. Too. Just we'll put his drilling. Him. <laughs> put some shoe polish on him. It'll be fine. I. People would talk about that a century from now. Like, remember when Planters Peanuts did that like whole ISIS thing? And like, like Tim Allen dressed up as like. 
okay, they could have just made him a white terrorist, but they put shoe polish on his face <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> and they said, and Tim Allen goes, any last words, Mr. Peanut? And Mr. Peanut looks in the camera and says, down with drump. <laughs> 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 That's a line worthy of a guillotine, not a machete. <laughs> That'd get me buying a snack pack. I'll tell you. <laughs> I can feel the nuts shaking in my fist already. <laughs> A whole little like one of those little like oh dude I fucking love snack packs they're good and they just get yeah, just a perfect amount of peanuts in your pocket man yeah, you don't dude. have to worry about any shells or anything you just got that thing you whip it out crack it open down a couple peanuts throw it back in the pocket and they're nice and warm too from the body heat yeah. my my dad uh, grew up in real rural South Carolina I remember we driving on a road trip and he's like son you gotta try this treat it's delicious is your dad Hank Hill <laughs> <laughs> but essentially uh. And the, it's just like a, a a bottle of Coke that you just pour peanuts in. That's what. Oh yeah. yeah we what? Keep hearing that that's good. Is it? it? No, it's not. Yeah, I was just like, it wasn't disgusting, but I was like, all right, well, I don't see how anyone would crave that. You pour salted peanuts into just a Coca Cola, yeah. and you drink it, and then you'll chew on the peanuts as they. What? As Father Dale described it, it's a beverage and a snack. Yeah, I'm but like, he's already having a beverage and a snack when he's eating Coke and peanuts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like I don't, it, I don't buy uh, some Swiss cake rolls and try to cram them into my Arnold Palmer. Can. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy like, them separately. <laughs> swirl it around a little bit. <laughs> oh, it's a bed for Janice. <laughs> Save so much time. You should start. You should actually like make a meal for your dad and have one of the drinks just be like, like a fucking beer and just like shred a burger and throw it in there. <laughs> Hi, dad, it's it's dinner and a drink. All at once. <laughs> it's a beerger. <laughs> <laughs> a beerger. Or is it a beerger? Or a Berg, <laughs> probably. Or, a, or a I like beer. Yeah, beer, yeah, beer's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, beer's good. That sounds disgusting. Holy I need shit. a. Beer. We could start a place, like start this big old restaurant chain. Well, it's gonna have to start small, but we could be the first in on the market on beer's. Millennials are combining food and drinks into one <laughs> item, and it's insane. Except we just always make the most putrid, disgusting shit. <laughs> I mean, like, like just name it after my dad. Call, call it just like Daddy Dale's, and it's, uh, <laughs> it's just like. He's the mascot, and it's you know the classic item, of course, is Coca Cola with peanuts. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to get adventurous, we got a lot of other, a lot of other things. You, you got know? the beerger. You got you got to do some chicken tenders in a milkshake. There's for the chicken. The beer girl come in a bottle, so you have to suck the food. Out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a glass bottle, so you can't even like squeeze it. And we have kids meals with toys, where like the toy is just like a cup of sand. <laughs> Maybe there's like a single rock in there. Kind of shake it around, and make some noise. You're supposed it's, to put it in your shoes. The, the, toy, the toys in the beverage somewhere. So you have to, oh, well, there's a, it's a toy and a drink, all in one. <laughs> it's a toy, a meal, and a beverage, all and, in one. And the beach. And if you want to add dessert, go for it. Get a get a slice of or like a scoop of chocolate mousse dropped into your like a like a little milk cup. No, the 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 whole can with the meal in it is coated in chocolate mousse. So you can you can lick the outside when you yeah, yeah. should really give me napkins. <laughs> Just like dripping down the kids' fingers. <laughs> The the napkin is uh or the it's the receipts printed on the napkin too. So <laughs> God, like, let's God. write this down. Let's do this. This is a good idea for a let's restaurant. I like this a lot. Um but you know what else I like even more than that? What's that? Ad What's reads. <sighs> Love is in the air. Someone grabbed the Lysol. <laughs> Just kidding. Even though this is a made-up holiday, it's still really cute. It's also the perfect time to show that special someone how much you care. And say those three words everyone wants to hear. Match my undies. MeUndies has the most adorable Valentine's Day prints to get all lovey-dovey this year. Don't worry if you don't have a boo. MeUndies also makes buddy bands so you can match with your pet, which is honestly more important than people. Right? Yeah. Uh, actually, just this week, MeUndies sent us a, a fresh pack of MeUndies to uh, wear, and I really I, I appreciate MeUndies because they consistently keep sending us free underwear, and every time it arrives at our office, it, it's like Christmas. Ryan and I are just like, ooh, MeUndies! I made the move. I made the move. What move? All of my underwear is now MeUndies. Oh, really? Yeah. Fuck yeah, I 100 percent are over here. I like it. To show how much they love you, MeUndies has not one but three new Valentine's Day prints this year. This is the perfect opportunity to show that special someone you're ready to take it to the next level with matching pairs. Match me so I know it's real is the motto this year. If you're matching your BFF or even your dog, it still counts. Or your mom. You could buy your mom underwear. Psst, psst, psst. Hey, Matt. Yeah. Um, someone told me that MeUndies has new loungewear. What? Yeah, the rumor has it that it's loungewear you can wear out and about. In public? Yeah, but keep, keep 
keep your eyes peeled for some cozy new additions. MeUndies has a great offer for my listeners and for Ryan's. Yes, for our, first time, our listeners, Matt. My listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. This is a no-brainer. You don't even need a brain to get this deal. You can you can be a single-cell amoeba, especially because they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. So, to get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. My boy, Ryan? MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. Wowza. Do you guys like those ad reads? Those are pretty good. Wow. Which, I was, which one was your favorite? Probably the first one that you did. All right. I yeah. think we only might have done one this week. That's why I, it was a safe pick. Yes. If you guys could do promo for one brand, who would you do it for? Planners Peanuts. Oh, dude. No, yes. no. Oh, oh, not one that we already do one for. Yeah. Like just What's any. the white whale? <sighs> hmm. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> for me? <laughs> oh, wait. It's, I just, sorry, I just remembered. Uh, back in the day, we were with Rooster Teeth's ad agency network and they asked us they were like are there any brands you guys want to work with so we made a list but then at the bottom like as a joke we just it, it, they were like products you actually use and mm-hmm. we threw we just threw in like e- xxl magnum condoms <laughs> and like they just did not think it was funny like, really they just never commented on it either so, i guess they were like oh yeah i guess they're serious i think my white whale would be a, a nostalgia run for this one brand where it's you and i's dressed up paper bags for fandango I use Fandango all the time to buy my movie tickets. I do. Like a red and blue paper bag? Yeah. You remember the old paper yeah, bag commercials they had? Yeah. And they, they were like singing hairs. the songs before oh, movies played? Yeah. Yeah. Show. I forgot about that. That's what I would do. What was the, There was a song, right? What was the... Wasn't there like a Fandango song? Yes. What, what, how'd I go? can't remember. I can look it up. I'll, I'll look it up and I'll start playing it in the middle of your answer. <laughs> It'd be cool <laughs> to do like an ad for Ricola on the same... Uh, same like uh you know if you ever have a sore throat actually you can drink like uh like a coca cola and drop some ricolas in it yeah i call it a ricola cola i like that <laughs> okay it's medicine and a drink at the same time exactly is this yeah remember this i don't think yeah, I, remember I don't this. no i do remember this yeah bang, bang, bang. yeah dude i love it because like i do that 100 percent i don't remember that you don't remember fandango commercials no not at all Damn. Well, okay. <laughs> Next conversation. Yeah, I guess, we'll, I guess okay. we'll move on from that one. <laughs> so, uh, sorry. Uh, I, You're the one that asked the question. Yeah. I was just answering. Yeah. Um, I watched recently, because YouTube keeps recommending them to me, these old, like, mid-2000s commercial uh, compilations. Mm-hmm. And it, it unlocks some, like, weird part of my memory that I'm like, I... The weird thing is, like, those memories are always in here. They're just not being accessed. Mm. I like the videos where it's just, like, the thumbnails literally just says 2000 or 2002. And it literally goes through all the, like, it mashes up, like, a music remix. And then they also throw in commercials and, like, movies and TV shows. Mm. And the, it just hits me right here. Mm-hmm. The oh, biggest so nostalgia commercial for that is the the Chef Boyardee rolling can <laughs> one. I, that's that's a one. great one. It always gets me. Feel like a child again. I start speak. I speak like a five year old. No for the chef rest tonight. Of the day. <laughs> <laughs> we should recreate that until you get your Chef Boy RD ravioli. Yeah, until See, I get it, then I. We'll I be pout. in the store, and you, you'll say, "You'll say, hey, can I, can I, can I have Chef for dinner?" Say, "No, no, no Chef for dinner tonight." And the little can goes, whoop. I mean, the little French music starts playing, rolls down the highway. That shit had to be pulverized by the time I got there. <laughs> yeah. you know, like that, it was like a nice bisque. Like, yeah, at that point. That actually might be No, that wouldn't be good. Yeah. I'll take that back. For a second, I was like, blend it up, Chef Boyardee. Might be good. I hate Chef Boyardee. I do. Yeah. I fucking you, hate, hate it. It's so disgusting. I, I, tr- I never really had it as a kid, so I remember in college, I was like, I'm going to finally have some. Shittiest ravioli I've ever had in my entire life. I am, it's fucking I am gross. In the minority, I love getting those little cups of the ravioli, just putting it in the microwave. Just a good little snack. I do like spaghettios. Spaghettios, spaghettios rule. Spaghettios not, with meatballs, though. Yes, has to be with meatballs. What about Frank's? What about with Frank's? No, no, nope. I Sorry, can't do it, dude. When I got to college, uh, uh, I've I've told this story on our podcast a little bit before, but uh, a little bit of cross promotion there. It's <laughs> right, <laughs> Gus and Eddie podcast. What's, what's your podcast? Again? It's crazy. It's called Gus and Eddie podcast. Uh, that's it's crazy. Uh, but uh, no, when I got. Uh, my own my first house in college i was the only one living there for the summer and every at the end of every semester the dorm room buildings would put out these big cardboard boxes 
for like unwanted clothing, unwanted electronics, and unwanted food. And all of the building administrators said, anybody that can use any of this stuff, take it. Otherwise, if there's stuff that you don't want to throw out, but you can't use, just put it in the bin. So I would go around, I'd wake up in the middle of the night so it wasn't embarrassing, and I'd rollerblade down to campus, and I'd like fill up a <laughs> duffel bag full of like electronic shit or like food stuff. And then, dude, it saved me so much goddamn money when I moved to my first house. I just had this whole cupboard full of like food that I'd gotten. And a ton of it was like, like Chef Boyardee ravioli and SpaghettiOs and soups and stuff. And it was terrible. I've got so goddamn sick of eating Chef Boyardee. I didn't like it the first time. I don't like it anymore. It's horrible. <laughs> My favorite thing about that is you rollerbladed. You immediately yeah. followed. So it's not embarrassing. So I rollerbladed down to campus. <laughs> like, immediately following that by like, like oh yes, I roller. And then the, the visual of Gus in the middle of the night rollerblading with bags what? of Chef Boyardee. I, I need to picture this. Do you have a helmet on? No. <sighs> Rebel. Yeah. Backpack, my purple uh, uh, high school basketball duffel bag, and a couple <laughs> of full of Chef Boyardee. <laughs> full of Chef Boyardee. How did dude. Gus die? He fell and got beamed in the head with a Chef Boyardee can <laughs> on his rollerblades. You know, it was like a car hit him because he was rollerblading at night with no reflective gear. And then the car hit him and... Uh, the ambulance thought it was his guts, but it was actually just Chef where he was splattered all <laughs> over like, the car. Damn, like, this kid had a lot of fucking intestines. In him. <laughs> Is that beef? <laughs> I thought, sorry, I got confused. I took a sip of my drink and I thought you were asking, what is that beef? And I was like, it's a, no, it's water. New bubbly flavor. It now. Sipping that beef, baby. I'm sipping that beef, baby. Beef in a can. I'm going to take God. a break to go pee real quick. You and are? get another drink. You guys want to take a little, like, five-minute break? Yeah, dude, I might yeah. freak that bathroom up to a little bit. Do we, do we, during this break, do we want to order lunch? Sure, let's yes. do that. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. Hey, guys, great so far. The guy who's yeah. hungry asks. Dude, I'm really hungry. I'm starving. Yeah. I was getting added yesterday a bunch because I guess Notch went on, like, a stream and was talking about, like, my shit, and I was mm. like... Uh, that's really? Nice. That's yeah, okay. Nice that's okay. Where it's like, no thanks. That's okay. Thank you. He's uh yeah. Didn't he like the whole thing is he like outbid like Jay-Z. Beyonce and Jay Z yeah. in the house and then like has these like sad parties where he doesn't really know anybody. I think he sold that they, house actually. Yeah, I don't think he, he had, had the candy room in it. He the doesn't candy room. do parties anymore too. It's just mm-hmm. like what does he do now? Which I'm real bummed about because uh, we weren't big enough at the time he was having those parties. Mm. And I wish that I don't think he would invite us now even. No. We made fun of the man too much. Yeah. But is he aware that you made fun of him? Probably. No. We made fun of him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck Notch, but we, we made fun of his candy room a lot. His candy room? He had a candy room. His mansion had a candy room. The really? walls were like <laughs> tubes of candy. I guess I don't know why I'm surprised here, but yeah, yeah. that is kind of fascinating. Yeah. I would love to see it there. Ross has been there. Anyway. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry that I had to see that. It's, okay. it's like it's like Gandalf when he has to drink the bad juice. No, not Gandalf. <laughs> it's close though. Dumbledore. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen Lord of the Rings. Uh, what? You haven't seen Lord of the Rings? I haven't. No. Are you fucking kidding me? I haven't seen it since I was young, and when I was young, young, I didn't really like it that much. <sighs> my my mom. But I do want to give it a new shot. We should I, watch it together. I, I haven't seen or. I mean, this might be a shock to you guys, not mm-hmm. to Ryan anymore. But I've only seen one Star Wars movie. Yep. That's fine. Episode. But that is okay. surprising, though. You can't have yeah, that know, reaction to Lord of the it's, Rings and it's, then be like, Star Wars. It is, <laughs> it is more surprising that you've only seen one Star Wars than it is that you haven't seen any Lord of the Rings. I've seen bits because, well, the thing was, my, my mom and dad and sister were like the biggest Lord of the Rings stands. Mm-hmm. And uh, they would always Stand. watch them on DVD and stuff. And I was always a little bit too young for that mm-hmm. because... My mom and my sister and my dad watched movies like Austin Powers, Lord of the Rings. And at the time, you know, it's like they're not going to let their, you know, 10-year-old watch oh, you Austin didn't get to Powers. Exp- oh, I forgot you don't have nostalgia for Austin. Dude. I watched it for oh, the first yeah. time recently, but I did miss half the movie, so, so it doesn't really count. No, it doesn't. I had to go clean you, my You room. can't miss half a movie and say you've seen it. Was it was funny, yeah. though. It was really fun. It was it, very, it's, it's, it's good. Up, dude. It's, yeah, it's like the older ones, like I watched the first one recently because usually the ones, like the one I always went back to for nostalgia reasons for some for some reason was Goldmember because that's the only mm-hmm. one I could see in theaters. Hmm. Um, my mom took me, strange enough, and we had the VHS tape. But like I, I always like would catch the other ones when they would play on like TV or whatever. Yeah. But the first one, like it does come across kind of like, n- I don't think... <sighs> Kind of like a Naked Gun esque type humor. Oh, for sure. Mm, yeah. And it's just like I Very really, I really dig that type of humor. Like I, I love, I love Naked Gun still. Like mm-hmm. I'll rewatch it and everything. I just, I like 
Airplane, all those all those classic yeah, fun dude. movies. Mm-hmm. You know I just best, like dad jokes. The best part of Naked Gun movies? OJ. OJ. Yes. yes. Yes, I forgot he's say, in those. Yeah. The but he's worst, like always hurting himself yeah, and shit. The, the worst part is he is so funny in those <laughs> yeah. movies. He's he's a bumbling he's not a bumbling idiot. It's the it's because of Leslie Nielsen's character that he's always like falling off of shit. Mm-hmm. That movie just the yeah, Naked Gun, the writing's just so fucking funny. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. My, I think one of my favorite moments. The is, hotel. Yeah, when they're like, looking across from the, in the hotel. And they're, they're looking at I was like, what do you think they're doing in there? And the guy's like, sex? He's like, no, we're on the job. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> just shit like that. <laughs> Um, fucking Austin Powers I think the funniest joke to me about Austin Powers is just how fucked up they made his teeth because he's British <laughs> so he just has these nasty <laughs> fucking teeth the whole movie dude when I was a kid I was terrified of Austin Powers <laughs> Wait, I forgot, really? yeah, I, forgot you I was really... just fucking out of my mind scared of him because <laughs> it was it was a family Christmas when I was probably like four or five and, and somebody went and got the first Austin Powers movie and we went and we watched it and I don't even know what it was about the movie but afterwards I was just I had this deep fear I think <laughs> maybe it was like Fat Bastard maybe it was just like I, I was I was slightly afraid of Fat Bastard I was a little I was afraid young. of Fat mm-hmm. Bastard body yeah. shaming I see were you that. afraid of the movie or Austin himself I th- I don't remember exactly what it was I remember when, especially when it's I was it's a bit like, off-putting as a kid. It was just pure white fear. It yeah. Was just, <laughs> <laughs> it was just like burning fear. Uh, especially when I was a kid, I was really tormented by like severe empathy for fictional characters. Like my mom's told me before, like I used to watch those Winnie the Pooh VHSs and stuff. And there's this one episode where Winnie the Pooh goes to the top of the tree and he falls down and hits all the branches. And I was just screaming. My mom said, like, <laughs> I can think this thing. He was like thing. 14 though. Yeah. <laughs> I would get really bothered by people going through bad shit. It was the opening. You guys remember a little Nicky, the Adam Sandler movie yes. where he's like the son of the devil is um, uh, John Lovitz in the beginning is like spying on a woman and then he falls and dies like out of a tree and he goes to hell and seeing somebody go to, go to hell I was like 10 or something because you actually like, picture them yeah, you're like, like that's oh gonna happen God. like that yeah. could happen to me I felt and not even just that but seeing that guy go to hell I was like laying in bed that night being like I feel it's almost like is this, is this what hell looks like yeah. oh my God. God. it was it I, fucked with me dude I, I always had that with like villains or bullies like whenever whenever they got their comeuppets um like i'd always feel kind of bad i'd be like oh i wouldn't like to be in that oh my god like really? it's just uh i don't know even even with classic disney villains whenever uh like uh jafar got trapped i'm like i wouldn't want to be trapped forever yeah Dude, that's a bit what? harsh that wasn't max keeble's big move when they used the phobia did you ever see that movie that's yes a great yeah movie. they used the fucking frog mascot phobia yes. to terrify the bully and you're like okay that's a little much guys it's like some deep rooted <laughs> shit yeah you know oh my god if we're talking about empathy for characters you know what fucking killed me when i was a kid store little when when he gets stepped on, <laughs> the, the mouse trap scene. <laughs> that scene's so fun, uh, dude. No, um, the black cauldron. Have you seen that? No, no. I haven't. I've only seen like scenes, yeah. sin scenes. Well, it's I haven't seen it in such a long time. I just remember there's a part where a character kills himself, and it's like really dark for a kid's movie. Oh my god! And uh, I just well, remember like it fucked me up as a kid. I remember seeing the first Tarzan movie like in theaters and every not the first Tarzan himself, movie, right? but the Disney <laughs> no in the Disney animated uh, Tarzan movie. And I just remember it's it's scary as a kid. The ending, the villain. Mm is at, like hung by his own rope and you just yeah. see his silhouette sh- sw- oh yeah, yeah. swinging they back and show. forth in yeah. like a light in like lightning striking mm-hmm. it's just like Jesus Kids Christ were fucked back then most, of, most Disney villains die in awful awful ways <laughs> yes it's fucked man. death always got me and I, I forgot which Indiana Jones movie it is but the guy falls off the cliff and the camera like follows him down as he's falling and he's just like hitting the wall as he goes he's like <laughs> <laughs> What? Well, I don't it's remember like a that. Really brutal death in an Indiana Jones. Indiana movie? Jones movie. Yeah, the guy falls off the cliff, and as he's falling, he's like just hitting the wall and just like rolling. It's oh, like really man. brutal. I, I don't think I dreamt that. I'm pretty sure that happened. Y'all seen Bone Tomahawk? No. no. It has one of the most fucked up scenes I've ever seen in a movie. What is it? I can't spoil it now. <laughs> I've seen the shell bones. <laughs> <laughs> No, I haven't seen. Just like a, <laughs> no, I, I, I fucking lied. There's just like a morbidly realistic dismemberment that happens in it, oh, where like geez. just like the dude just screaming the whole time, and you're just like, just like, oh, this. I was having a good time with the movie. I can't. It's, do it's, that. it's the up until peanut, that. Man. It's like yeah. when it starts to feel like um, torture porn, like what Saw kind of uh, heightened mm. in its time. I haven't seen. Where like that stuff always like. It just made me feel like I was watching a snuff film, like the same feeling like you would get yeah. from going on to like 
uh, gore or um, r slash watch people die would be like kind of the mm-hmm. same. Like I, this is just like a Serbian film goes over the top to make it. Have it's you heard of dirty? That? You're like, yeah, yeah I've yeah, heard I've of it. I've seen, yeah, seen bits of it. I'm just like, it's I just can't like do it. where stuff is like so fucked up to where it's. Just, I, I get, I get. There's like artistic. You can be artistic and everything, but like maybe it's their point to be shocking. But at the same time, it's like, ah, eh, I, I'd, I'd rather, I'd rather. Uh, have some good characterization instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I completely agree. You know what I rewatched recently was Green Room, and I just can't fucking watch that. <sighs> I do like that movie it's though. So brutal. Though. It's such a good movie. That movie gave me anxiety like no other movie. It's it's the one the one scene that always gets me is the wrist scene. Yeah, yeah. that it's it's with the box cutter. Like, it's, it's just, so obscenely violent that it ultimately leaves me like it's a great movie, but I'm like I ha- kind of hated that though because it's yeah. just so overbearing. Like the violent. feeling, just like your stomach's empty and it while ends watching just it. Like, Oh, well, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say? Uh, well, what I couldn't handle even before, I actually like it in the movie, though, is in District 9 when his nails start falling. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I remember being a kid and being like, I can't fucking handle this right now. <laughs> he's in the bathroom. And, yeah, oh, that dude, scene is disgusting. That's, that's the party, right? Where they have the surprise party and for him. And he pukes. And yeah, he, like, goes in the bathroom and he pukes and black into the... Oh, God. But but that's like, a great movie. I love yeah, that movie. Yeah, District 9 is a fucking fantastic movie. I love District His 9. other movies weren't so good, no. I heard. I didn't see them. Elysium was okay. Uh, I forgot he did Elysium. Chappie wasn't good, but I liked I Chappie enjoy the character. Chappie. I enjoyed it, that's the it thing as is, a movie. I had fun, but I really didn't like the side characters' yeah. accents especially. I just couldn't even like hear it, really. South African accents sorry uh eddie i didn't realize <laughs> you were like that <laughs> i another couldn't movie. understand <laughs> it i'm sorry another movie that had like just nail shit in it i remember at black the time swan. just like fuck me up wasn't no it's yeah wait black swan, black swan when right? she has when the she hangnail and just, like, the hang oh, nail, like all the way down, down. i heard about that scene and that's why i didn't see black swan oh, <laughs> and then the girls kiss two girls make out <laughs> that's just despicable it was it was it was, it was hot stuff, Dude. man <laughs> any movie that's got some uh some chick on chick action count me in <laughs> cow you in <laughs> Dude, I can't do, uh, uh, like, I, I like to think that I can watch gore for the most part, but experiencing it myself and stuff, I can't do paper cuts and fingernail shit. It's yeah. the most disgusting thing ever. Like, in, dude, in, like, Jackass. With when the yeah, 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 I was going to bring that up. Oh, we were all about to bring that up. I hate the, uh, when they, the webbings of the toes. That's the, the one I just gross. Fuck that. I, I can watch anything they do but that. Yeah. But only two Jackass. I've, I've said this before. Two Jackass ones I can't watch. The paper cut one and the one where Steve-O is high out of his mind and puts the fish hook through his cheek. Oh, um, yeah, that's hard to watch. Like, for, that one... I'm like, dude. For me, for some reason, in Jackass Three, it's the the shit volcano. I can't. <laughs> well, now knowing what it is, it, I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, I saw that in 3D in theaters with my dad at a, at a at a at a uh, dinner and movie place. So, like I had my meal like fresh in front of me, and it's one of the lava cakes. And then in 3D, <laughs> I had a big bowl of chili, and then 3D just. I didn't know what it was at first. I was like. <laughs> that's the problem is you investigate because you're not sure what you're looking <laughs> yeah, at and then when you realize like, oh. it extra grosses you out mm-hmm. that one's disgusting well we were yeah. talking about National Treasure 3 and like our excitement for it I mean Jackass 4 is a thing now. Jackass yeah, dude. 4 dude that's, I'm stoked out of my fucking it's, mind I it's gonna be the I feel like that it's, gonna be, it's gotta be the last, yeah, last it's gotta one. be but we, we see that every time because like oh they're getting old now it's always the same thing but now it's like they're getting Old, old. This one is definitely, and I don't think it's just the age. I think it's all the factors. It's they're getting older. Uh, like Knoxville's full Hollywood at this point. Like Bam. not in a bad way, but yeah. it's like he's really doing it there. Bam is really struggling with substance. I, my stuff. heart breaks when I, whenever I like. I recently, he did the whole Doctor Phil shit, and I'm like, why is Bam on Doctor Phil? Yeah, dude. And then there was the Vice thing. I think before that, which is like a 45 minute documentary, like it. on his alcoholism. Oh, I didn't yeah, know that. it was yeah, Vice or some it. someone. No, else. it was a YouTube thing. I saw that one. Uh, yeah, it was like a skate. Fuck, I can't remember. I totally saw that thing. It was really good, and it was, it, and it was kind of during that point too, where he got a little skinny again. He was kind of mm-hmm. skateboarding, but now like he's doing worse. And, and his I wonder parents if he'll be in it. Straught. I I think there's no way that he won't be in my view, but like I don't know to the extent of which he'll be in it. It's just yeah. sad see, seeing him. Just I mean, he was the thing is like. I guess his personality, like they were all like just dicks, like around strangers and around each other, mm-hmm. but like they weren't, they weren't. There's a clear difference between them and someone like I guess Logan Paul comes to mind when you think of someone who does out does outrageous things in public or whatever mm. they do, but they get a negative reaction as opposed to a positive. And I was trying to like what 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 is the stark difference between Logan's like why never why are the butt of the joke? Sorry, I didn't yeah, think of, that's why I think it is. And also, he doesn't have a cast of friends that you can tell where they're kind of having fun. It's yeah. kind of like oh, Logan pays the bills and he's never the joke and he's just fucking with people all mm-hmm. the time. 
you know, but it, it, it kind of like makes me sad because seeing people do outrageous stuff, <laughs> I keep on trying yeah, to see no, you between the bars, but this is this good, but his nose yeah. has been missing. the whole <laughs> yeah, it, it looks like the meme where they like completely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, but like the, the microphone stands are blocking our view of each other. But like, are, are, I wish, I don't know. It's one of those things like, I wish kids had their like own little Jack, like appropriate jackass mm. like that we had, because right now I feel like they're growing up with kind of like the. The rich kids that just like I bought this fancy car and drove it off of a cliff type of thing, which is like I'm sure cool to watch as a kid. You're like, holy shit, this mm -hmm. stuff is goofy and crazy. Yeah, but uh, it ain't it ain't it ain't no uh, fishing with Steve O though. No, know? it ain't no T. Do you remember Wild Boys, dude? Yeah, Wild, I Wild Boys. I watched that with my dad all the Actually, time. Actually, well, I was over at Gus and Eddie's place, and uh, we talked about Jackass for like an hour straight. Yeah, we remember did. There? That was the last with Jakey and stuff, and we yeah. just we just sat down and talked about Jackass for so long. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm dude. beyond stoked, and and I I don't like it when people write off just because they're old, because it really is like I think that makes it better. Yeah, it is yeah. better, and and all of them will be the first to say it. Like I know in like 2015, Rolling Stone did this huge piece where it was like Jackass Week because it was like the 15th anniversary, and like so many of those guys, they're just watching old sketches and stuff, and they're just saying. I know we're old, but I st like I'll like kill myself. Like, I just <laughs> want to do it so bad, you know, because it's still people are they're not good at doing it, you know, like they don't well, do it's, it successfully. It's part of the adrenaline rush that they all feel like this. They've they've talked about in interviews how there is like a fun ener energetic. Uh, there's like a bond there, but it's also an adrenaline rush for them. It's like they're also like addicted it's like to a doing high, this yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're doing like, this crazy high stakes shit. Like Bam was like just kind of like a, would draw shit up, like even though it was sometimes shit that couldn't be done, mm -hmm. but like he just all just be drawn like a kid like of stuff he wanted to do constant like, that's he, drew, like he drew the butt plug kite thing and like faxed it over <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. yeah that's like all the guys like you'll even hear when they're between projects and between jackass stuff they'll all be like knoxville steve o bam they're like hey i just yeah i'm drawing up like cool schemes and stuff and writing down ideas all the time so i can't imagine now with so much time that went back that by between three and four now I'm sure they're going to be shooting forever because uh, a lot of the guys were even talking during the principal photography for three. I think they shot for like the better part of a year straight. They said they had enough to make like three movies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it's like now this has got to be everyone knowing, OK, this is the last time they're going to have so much fucking footage. What I love, too, is that with like pop culture wise for them, it's not like when they come back, everyone's like, oh, they're getting a little old. This is kind of pathetic. It's like we all beg them. And it's like, yeah, please come back. We want you to be relevant again. And we want to watch another movie. It's, yeah. it's not even like that feeling of like Toy Story where you're like, oh, why are they making another one? And it's like, oh, it was fine. It was good. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that feeling of like, it is this giant fan base yeah. that is just like, please, more. Yeah. Because there will never be enough. Like, I, I, I remember my stepbrother owned, he accidentally, he well, he owned the like DVDs, like mm -hmm. before the movies were like, come, like the MTV maybe, show you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And so he owned the DVDs and he left them over at my place. And I just remember like I was young and I wasn't supposed to be like kind of watching that stuff because we'd watch it after the parents would go to bed. And yeah. like, I got so excited. I would yeah, just watch dude. them again and again. I'd invite my friends over. I was like, I was the kid with the with, with the, the naughty jackass, jackass DVDs. DVDs. Yeah. Well, I think uh, another reason they're so good is because it, it gives you that like uh, nostalgic feeling of, of when you were like uh, a kid or like a teenager and you would hang out with like those friends that were like the rebellious ones and mm -hmm. like the kind of thrill of that. Because I had a friend and his brother that would always hurt themselves. They would do jackass style sh stuff and they were like invincible. And I couldn't I couldn't even go outside without my shoes on. So like <laughs> I loved I got my camera. And I'd film them do stupid shit in a similar way because my friend would just be like, oh, um, let me get on top of this electrical box. I'm going to do a backflip off of it. Or like just shit like that, and I had the most fun watching them do that. So like when I watch Jackass, it just reminds me of like the thrill of doing that kind of I, shit. I told you I did that with like my stepbrother. Called it Jackbutt, right? Yeah, we called it Jackbutt. <laughs> it was like when our neighborhood was under construction, so we'd go into like the house that were under construction and just jump off of shit and like <laughs> the top of like a three story roof. <laughs> but like it was, it was, it wasn't anywhere near, of mm. course, like the stuff they would do. But like to us, like it was just like ah, this is. It was weird that those types of people were like our heroes at one point. Mm. Like I, I want to live their life. They look like they have so much fun. So you just mimic it with your friends. Yeah. I have yeah. a homemade jackass video scar still. Really? Yeah. yeah. I let, uh, when I was 14, I let a friend cause they had, uh, a, a, like 
you know, everyone was doing jackass videos, but they had like 2000 subscribers at the time, which Ooh. like when we were in high school was like insane. Viral, yeah. And they, uh, th I let them hit me with a floor. They did it too. I wasn't oh, the first the fluorescent one. Light. Fluorescent light. And the thing is mine was the, I got it the absolute worst because they did it perfectly where it broke on this arm and then it was moving so fast that it cracked in half and uh, over my back and stomach, oh it just like God. slapped and whipped me both ways and then cut me over here too. And then, so I have, like uh just little scarring like right on this arm because it was where they initially hit me but the girl i had a crush on cleaned off my blood oh, and shit. we went on a date afterwards Ooh, so I guess it was worth it did you guys uh watch any last man standing hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> Three Three episodes. Episodes. <laughs> that's awesome that's really disappointing to hear though from all you guys because we were explicitly told to not do that at home and all you guys did that. <laughs> we didn't follow johnny's no. word <laughs> Johnny is warning. <laughs> Did you not respect him enough? That was a good Johnny warning. That's not exactly like him. The stunts in this film. Nope. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not gonna ruin it by doing well, more. I, but. It turns I, into Jerry. I remember <laughs> specifically liking Men in Black Two because of the fact yeah. Knoxville was in it. Yeah. What about the Ringer? And even though people like when I go back and look up reviews <laughs> at the time, also a good movie. Yeah, <laughs> when I go up and look reviews like at the time, they're like he was one of the worst parts in it. Mm. I'm like, no, that's why I watched it. I loved him in it. Like when Daniel Tosh was in the Love Guru. <laughs> yeah. Like in a cowboy. As the cowboy. <laughs> yeah. Not exactly as the cowboy. like. Like, like two <laughs> Man, well, it has been a <laughs> delightful, delightful afternoon having you sweet, succulent boys on our podcast. Thank you so much for coming Think on. We have Thank pizza on the way. Yeah, we got pizza on the way too. Ooh. Have a little pizza party. Where can, uh, yeah. where can people find you guys? Um, <laughs> oh, guess went full silence. So I was like, all right. It's uh, uh, Eddie Burback. That's Eddie with a Y is my YouTube channel. And then the Gus and Eddie podcast. That's my name everywhere on social media. Hell yeah, dude. And I'm Gus Johnson. That's G-U-S Johnson. I do comedy sketches on YouTube, and you can find me with the Gus and Eddie podcast. Look at that. Yeah, go check them out. All the links will be in the description. Go follow these boys. Subscribe to their podcast, because I've been seeing a lot of people saying, like, what are more podcasts in this style to listen to? Go check theirs out. It's fucking fantastic. Thank you so much, boys. Just, Thanks, don't, boys. just don't abandon us for them, please. No. <laughs> Coexist. <laughs> you guys have a better podcast anyways I don't I don't I think disagree. so I disagree you guys have cameras with yours that <laughs> didn't help but sometimes the batteries die and we oh we've been there we've been yeah. there like, and be like oh we, we've been talking for the last 10 minutes and the camera's been off yeah exactly <laughs> anyway guys seriously thank you so much for coming on thank you awesome. for having Thanks, us boys. boys you guys want to do one big like group kiss yeah yep. yeah, yeah. alright three two, two one, one.